Good evening, Advent, and welcome to our nightly Vesper service. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, grant us a quiet night and peace at the last. Amen. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praise to your name, O Most High, to herald your love in the morning and your truth at the close of the day. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Holy and gracious God, I confess that I have sinned against you this day. Some of my sin I know, the thoughts and words and deeds of which I am ashamed. But some is known only to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I ask forgiveness. Deliver and restore me that I may rest in peace. Amen. By the mercy of God, we are united with Jesus Christ in whom we are forgiven. We rest now in the peace of Christ and rise in the morning to serve. Today, I'm beginning a series on Luther's small catechism and we'll take up the different sections of that over the next several days and weeks and I hope that that change up is something that you'll find some meaning in uh, and uh, rather than necessarily always taking up a new scriptural theme, we'll take up scripture themes from within the framework of Luther's small catechism. And so we begin with the Ten Commandments and more specifically we begin with the first commandment. You shall have no other gods. What does this mean? Luther asks. We are to fear, love, and trust God above all things. Okay, now before some of you begin this whole eye-rolling thing and mutter under your breath, what is she making me do this for to revisit all of this teaching from my catechetical or confirmation days, hear me out. One explanation for doing this might, ironically, tongue-in-cheek be that I I'm turning this exercise into something that's akin to shooting fish in a barrel because I have your attention and you're not going to go anywhere anytime too soon and in this moment you're pretty well stuck with me unless you choose to turn off the uh, iPad or the laptop or the computer at this particular time but I'm guessing and I'm hoping that you won't do that but here's the better reason for why it is that I want to do this and it's not just because I want to bore you or I think I have a captive audience, but I believe that Luther's small catechism stands the test of time. It is still real and it is still relevant 500 years after its writing. It has not lessened in its interpretive truth. And so I think it bears having the opportunity to review it again and to look at it again and to re-examine it from the perspective of not only our lives before this pandemic, but as we are in it right now, because if truth be told, in this moment we are grasping at straws for where it is that we can focus our trust and where it is that we can find comfort. And so we take up the first commandment, you shall have no other gods, and Luther's meaning again is we are to fear love and trust God above all things. Easy enough, you might want to say, Having other gods doesn't sound very relevant if we think about it from 21st century perspective, or at least initially. You know, after all, we're not in times of antiquity. We are not grabbing a lump of clay or a piece of wood or a blank canvas to somehow fashion some idol for our worshiping purposes. But our gods, other than the one God that we worship, still do exist and they are not nearly so obvious as the idols from antiquity, and certainly within the classical understanding of that term. But if we put it within this framework, if we think about those things in our lives that are of ultimate concern to us, those things or those people in whom we have infused the highest value and would do anything to protect, those are, in fact, our gods. The most obvious of them are possessions. That's an easy identifier for us. Less obvious would be our children 
for our grandchildren, especially for those who are helicopter parents or grandparents who end up, in spite of their good intentions, of trying to wrap up their children in some sort of protective shrink wrap. And when they do that, they end up choking the life and the vitality out of them. And they end up robbing them of the gift of freedom and being able to become their own people. That's not the average garden variety parent or grandparent, but there are those individuals out there who live vicariously through their children and to their peril. Country can be an idol. Yes, you heard me right. It is dangerous to easily or too easily fuse God and country, no matter how well-intentioned that we might be in that fusion. They are not the one and the same. Work can be an idol, too, if the sum total of our identity is wrapped up in who we are in our vocational lives. And the measure of whether your gods are deserving of your attention really is summed up best in this way. If your gods end up consuming you rather than giving you life, well, then you've got a problem. They aren't very helpful to you then, are they? They blur your vision of life and life's essential goodness, and they end up taking rather than giving. But our God gives. Our God gives. God gives life and loves us without reserve and provides us a boundary for our choices and behaviors that also gives life, but also gives safety and freedom in equal measure. Our God paves a way for us for the future and then walks that journey of the future with us, joins us in that future in Jesus who we know as the Christ. And in the end, when we think about it, why would we want to sell our souls to any other God than the God who gives us life and gives it to us abundantly? Now that didn't hurt too much, did it? Come back tomorrow and we'll deal with some of the other commandments as well. Guide us waking, O Lord, and guard us sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep we may rest in peace. Now, Lord, you let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people, a light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people, Israel. O God, you have called your servants to ventures of which we cannot see the ending, by paths as yet untrodden, through perils unknown. Give us faith to go out with good courage, not knowing where we go, but only that your hand is leading us and your love supporting us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Almighty and merciful God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless, preserve, and keep us this night and forevermore. Amen. Good night, Advent.